We're talking today about integrating with respect to time and I want you to call your mind back to when we first, a couple of lessons ago, um, introduced this topic and we said, hey, if you have not just a, an XY graph, but a displacement time graph. So your vertical axis is now X and it's your position relative to some fixed point. And then your horizontal axis is your T, your time axis, right? If you've got a displacement graph, then we've established that the first derivative with respect to time, x dot, right? It gives you the velocity graph, right? You've already done this a couple of times where you put them on the same, same thing, right? And I just want you to focus on what that means geometrically, right? The gradient of this tangent, the gradient of this tangent corresponds to um, how fast are you going and in what direction? Yeah, that's the, that's the vector part of velocity. So for instance, see this component here, this particular tangent I've drawn, it's, uh, going in the decreasing direction, which is why down here the velocity graph is negative. Does that make sense? Yeah? And look what happens as the velocity graph approaches zero, what's the displacement graph doing? The displacement graph is, well it, it's slowing down because velocity is going towards zero. Does that make sense? So there is a, um, there's a stationary point there because velocity is zero. Yes? Now, quick note before I move past this, just as a, a, an aside, uh, you can see this is my like my time axis, okay? And so just because I was a bit lazy, I just put a parabola on there and I didn't make anything special about it in terms of its domain restrictions. So over here, like if this is the axis right down the middle, the displacement axis, what values of time am I having over here on the left-hand side? What values? These are negative values of time. Now, this is not a rhetorical question, but I want you to think about it. Can we have negative values of time? Time and the answer is, can I have negative values of time? The answer is, it depends, right? Now, if you have a question and it says, uh, an object starts moving at time zero, then that means for all intents and purposes, there is no such thing as negative time. But I could just as equally say, um, time zero is midnight. Okay, and then, and then you know, it starts going through in hours. Well, there is such a thing as negative time, it's just, it's last night, right? That's, that's all that means, okay? And in fact, just like with displacement, we can define displacement to have zero at different spots, like at the surface of the water from that ball, that lady throwing that um, thing off the bridge, right? Or maybe the zero is where the girl is, the lady starts with her weight. So you can, you can change where your displacement zero is, you can change where your time zero is as well, okay? Now, if we understand then that differentiating from displacement gives us velocity, well therefore it stands to reason that if you integrate instead of differentiate, right, you should go in, well, in the opposite direction, right? Now, if I gave you the velocity graph, or the velocity function, rather, you should then be able to integrate and get the displacement graph, right? But just stop for a minute, don't have any pens in your hands, I just want you to think. Why did we introduce the idea of integration? Think back to like when we first met this topic. What problem was it solving? It was solving the problem of area, right? Which means that, onto your diagram, I'd love you to add this. Which means that if you have an area underneath the velocity graph, this is really important, I'm gonna say it twice because it's such a weird idea, right? An area underneath the velocity graph is the same as a change in displacement on the displacement graph, right? So for example, have a look at this one, right? Here's my velocity graph between time one, time two. Okay, I've chosen a very simple example, so my velocity graph is just a straight line, okay? So if you have a look at the area underneath the graph, what's this purple shape? What is the shape? It's a trapezium, which means that its area is half times the, um, what am I thinking on? H on two, that's the height, the height of the trapezium, um, times the average, oh, I've already done half, um, times the sum of the two parallel sides, yeah? Now you can actually have a look, this is why I needed, I couldn't draw it freehand, right? You can actually have a look, this side here, which is parallel, is, is two in length, this side here is four in length, so that's why my area calculation over here is half times h, which is one, times a plus b, which is two plus four, yeah? So when you go ahead and you crunch that, you get three. The area underneath the curve, the velocity curve from one to two, that area is three. What that corresponds to is, between time one and time two, the displacement has changed from three to six. Three units, does that make sense? Right, so what we're doing here is going in the opposite direction, working out a displacement, and it corresponds to area. Okay, now I want to push on this intuition a little more. Let me put this aside for a minute. So I have a man, 
He's jogging at this particular speed, 10 kilometers per hour, and I'm going to start him off 20 kilometers from his home. Okay. So what I'd like us to do now is draw the displacement. Yeah, he's, oh no, he's running home or something like that. Okay, or running away from home. Ah, whatever. Oh, he's gonna, we're going to draw the displacement time graph and the velocity time graph, and then I want us to think about this. Okay. So uh, let's make him run in the opposite direction to home. Okay. So what that means is, if I just think about my displacement time graph, so displacement time. Okay. If he begins 10, 20 kilometers from home, then that means my intercept here on the displacement axis is going to be 20. That's where he begins, not at the origin. And because he has a constant velocity, okay, that means that this displacement graph is just going to get further and further and further away. Okay. So for instance, if I have a look at, say, when is he going to be, if that's 10, that's 20, that's 30, at what time will he be 30 kilometers away from home? After, after one hour, right? So that means over here. So that means time one. And then when he, if we have a look at, say, when he's 40, that should be at time two. Okay. So this is our displacement time graph. On the same axis, if you've got another color there, we can also put in our velocity time graph, right? So let me just complete this out. I might put this x actually over here. So now when I put in my velocity graph, well, what's it going to look like? Can you tell me what it'll look like? This is his velocity. Does it ever change? Not in the context of this question. I haven't said anything. So it's just going to be a horizontal line, horizontal line like this. This is x dot, and it's at 10. Okay. Now, when we have a look at a simple example like this, uh, you know, we drew this graph before, between time one and time two. Okay. If I have a look, if I integrate, oops, x dot, right? This is the velocity from time one to time two, with respect to time. It's the time axis, right? Before we go ahead and calculate what it is, what will the shape be? What does it look like? Think carefully. This is the integral of this. This is an area question, right? What area does it correspond to? What shape is it? This is just going to be a rectangle, right? Do, are you okay with that? Like this is the x dot graph, and then between one and two, there's the shape. Okay. So I could go ahead and I could do like calculus and that kind of thing. But being that this is just an area of a rectangle, can you tell me? Oh, I should stay with orange. Can you tell me how I would work it out? What's the area of a rectangle? Length. Its length times breadth, right, which in this case will be 1 times 10, because that's how tall it is, right? Sorry, my horizontal and vertical axes are so different, okay? So that, of course, is 10. Now, get this with me, right? Write this underneath because this is so important, right? You just told me that area equals length times breadth. But what you've just worked out is not just an area, but that area represents what? What is that 10? What does that correspond to? It's, it's the, it happens to the gradient because I've gone for one unit. But because I've integrated the velocity graph, it's given me a change in displacement. Look, here I am at time one, and I go up to time two, a distance of 10 kilometers, right? So instead of saying just area, I can say, well, that's displacement, right? That's actually what I've calculated, right? It's like a distance, yeah? Well, that distance has a horizontal and a vertical component. It's actually the same as saying speed times time. Do you recognize this? This is the distance speed time triangle that we've been used to for so long, okay? Except it literally corresponds to those things because this orange height here, what does it represent? It's the, it's the speed, it's the velocity, right? What about horizontally? What does that represent? It represents time. Do you see what's happening? Now, I've just chosen this example because it's a simple rectangle. Okay? But when we integrate weird, wonderful shapes, all we're saying is you divide up your weird, wonderful, curved thing into an infinite series of rectangles. That's all they are. Right? So when you integrate velocity with respect to time, you're just saying, you know, width of the, sorry, width of the rectangle 
height of the rectangle. You're just doing distance, 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 and you're just adding them all up, right? That's why you get displacement, okay? So there are some really nice visual um, um, interpretations of it. I need a particular picture. There we go, like say this one. Now this is the same graph you drew before. You don't need to draw it onto yours because it's going to become too busy. But I just want you to think with me as to what this means. Think about what it means. Okay. Yeah, good question. Okay, so you can see what this purple thing is, right? I'm integrating this particular thing from some negative value over to some positive value, right? Now it looks pretty symmetrical, right? When you calculate this integral, not the area, the integral, what do you think will your answer be? It should be zero, right? Because you've got a, a negative, an er a, this is signed area, right? This is a negative, this is a positive, it's zero. But integrating the velocity graph gives you displacement. So what does that mean? You haven't moved anywhere, or you've moved nowhere relative to yourself. That's what the blue arrow is, you see? He started here, he's ended on this interval, he's ended on the same spot. Displacement zero. Does that make sense? So you need to think visually about what's going on. Please, please, please do not just think about this as I'm just doing more calculus and I'm just going through the motions, right? You must interpret. That's what distinguishes this from all the integration you've done in the past. Does that make sense?